Good morning. Good evening. Welcome to evening prayer for Holy Comforter Episcopal Church. Today is Monday, October 21st. Our service of evening prayer begins with our opening sentence found on page 115 of your Book of Common Prayer. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your way to the glory of your name. Amen. Mighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness. By the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us together pray by reading the Phosphorin found on page 118. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices. O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our gospel reading today comes from the book of Luke. In the ninth chapter, verse 51 to 62. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers ahead of him on their way. They entered a village of Samaritans to make ready for him. But they did not receive him, because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. And to another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, First, let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God.
Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Let us respond by together praying the Nunc Dimittis found on page 120. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations in the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. So this evening in Luke, we get rapid fire of three um, seemingly unrelated stories about those who were told about Jesus and really given the opportunity to follow Jesus but kind of had a false start in doing so. And while they may not really seem to relate to one another, we need to always remember that while the Bible is written by humans, um, actually a lot of humans over a lot of years, that inspiration of the Holy Spirit will always um, shock and amaze us, and delight us. Um, here's a really good example of that. Everything in the Bible is related, y'all. So I like to remind myself of this interconnectedness of this passage with a little bit of alliteration. So um, this is going to focus on the letter R. And I don't know why um, alliterations are just super fun and it helps me to learn. And because the Holy Spirit just made me this way with my brain. Um, but see, I loved Sesame Street as a kid. And there were alliterations all over the place there. So an alliteration, just to take us back to grammar, <laughs> literally grammar school, um, alliteration is where it has repetition of the same letter or of the same sound in connected words. So like Sesame Street is an alliteration because the S's or Big Bird because the B's. Um, so I would like to offer what we have here in our lesson tonight is a resolute rejection, a rational rebuking, and a rescheduling reorientation. So to explain, Jesus had entered this Samaritan village. Now we've discussed in our prior um, observances of the morning and evening office um, prayers that Jews and Samaritans did not see eye to eye. And this is why the parable of the Good Samaritan was so powerful, because the Samaritan of all the examples, the Samaritan was the one who stepped up in neighborly love. But in this story, Jesus was not received in that village. Now, this wasn't so much of a surprise. Again, it was a Samaritan village, but we're given insight as to why. Verse 53 says, because his face was set towards Jerusalem. Jesus was resolved in his passion toward Jerusalem in that eventuality. So we have a resolute <laughs> rejection in the first part of the story. See my alliteration here. Okay, now... We get a really odd reaction from James and John. And maybe we get a tiny glimpse into why Jesus came up with his nickname for them, the Sons of Thunder. Um, when they saw that this village uh, didn't welcome Jesus with open arms, the two of them, honestly looking like they're a little, you know, full of themselves with their new ministerial gifts that they've been given by Jesus, they ask if they can rain down um, heavenly wrath to consume the villagers. 
Now, these men are admittedly a bit irrational. Ever the cooler head, you know, ever the one who's going to uh, take control of this situation and point out how um, inappropriate this is. And spoiler alert, this is not the only time that he's had to be the voice of the cooler head with them. Jesus speaks, right? And so this is our rational rebuking from Jesus in this portion of our lesson tonight. So the end of our lesson uh, gives us a handful of instances where folks are calling out to Jesus, to him, to say they want to go with him, or he's calling out to them and they have sort of an intriguing exchange. You know, it's just a tiny few bit of verses, but it really is deep. And you can tell that Jesus is getting to the very heart of these folks, that there's a tug between their responsibilities at home and the timing of Jesus' invitation. And y'all, we know that regardless of what is said, from folks to Jesus and really what is said back to them there's there's another we always talk about kind of the the parabolic level or what's in the verses and then there's that second story going on that he's getting to the heart of what's really going on in their heart right okay he sees right through them to what really is going on that's just true today as it was then right and Jesus in verse 58 and 60 here and really in 62 he's using hyperbole you know, he's using that bigger, bigger speech. And, um, you know, we talked about even that when Jesus says, you know, if your hand causes you to sin, chop it off. He's not really saying chop limbs off, guys. He's just using hyperbole there. Okay. But he's using that to hammer things home. It's this. When God gives you a call, gives you, um, you know, a message that there is work at hand. There's a plow right in front of you. There's a calling that he's given you, and there's the work that God has called you to, okay? There is no looking back. There is, there is nothing greater than that. So nothing else takes priority. That is a kingdom of God orientation. When we pray in the Lord's Prayer every day in the offices in the Lord's Prayer, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We aren't saying right behind that, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When I secure a comfy home, comma, and when I get all my affairs put in order, comma, and when I have all my work done, um, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven when I get all these things done. Right? And that exchange is a rescheduling reorientation that Jesus achieved with those folks. So, as followers of the way of Christ, in this short, you know, these short exchanges, when viewed together, they offer us a deep meditation on how to orient ourselves towards others and towards the work of the Lord that he calls us to. Amen. Let us together reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 120. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We'll pray suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon the earth, your saving health, help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, or the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Our collect for Proper 24 can be found on page 235. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy so that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Returning to page 123 for a collect for peace. Most holy God, the source of all good desires, all right judgments and all just works, give to us your servants that peace which the world cannot give, so that our minds may be fixed on the doing of your will, and that we being delivered from the fear of all enemies may live in peace and quietness through the mercies of Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. O God and Father of all, whom the heavens adore, let the whole earth be worship you, and all nations obey you. All tongues confess and bless you, and men and women everywhere love you and serve you in peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear God, hear now our prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings, both those spoken with our lips and those offered quietly to you at this time. Looking to our chat, Lord, we pray and lift our prayers for Marcy. We pray for all of her caregivers. For those of you who lift the prayer needs found in our weekly service bulletin, we lift in prayer Celeste, David, Walter, May, Cynthia, Lee and Bonnie, Herb and Rhonda, Russell, Marcy, Aaron, Sterling, Marcy, Jan, Jackie, Eunice, Faye, Melissa, Suzanne, Nancy, Anna, Roberta, Diane, Leland, Maria, Anita, Val, Susie, Patsy, Lord, we also lift up Ethan, 
and Amber. We lift Lord Carmen and her family. Lord, we also pray for ongoing prayers for Patsy and her animals. We pray, Lord, for those who have died. May light perpetual shine upon them. We pray for Sharon and particularly for her family, for her sister Sarah and their family and all who love them, and for Vicki and Kurt and their family and all who love her. We pray for those who are in areas of conflict and war. We pray for those who support them and for those in the military serving in those areas, particularly for Matthew, Hayden, and Perry who are actively serving. We pray in celebration for those who are celebrating their birthday this week, Chayton, Brindley, Barbara, Lillian, Melissa, Tori, and Tim. We pray for those who are celebrating their anniversary this week. Lord, we pray for our national church. We pray for the help and ministry of our presiding Bishop Michael as he prepares for the end of his service as presiding bishop and for transition to our bishop-elect Sean. We pray for our national church. We pray for our diocese and for our standing and steering committees and all who serve on committees. We pray for our assisting bishops, Scott and Chip. We pray for our local parish, Holy Comforter, for all of our parishioners and families, for our lay leaders and vestry, for our staff and admins, and for all of our clergy. We pray for our companion parishes, parishes in Cuba, St. Michael and All Angels, and St. James the Apostle, and their priest, Mother Haiti, and Father Roberto. We pray for all of our upcoming events, Lord, and we ask for you to bless them. We pray for Holy Comforter Episcopal School, for all the little ones there and their families. We pray for the teachers and the staff and the administrators who care for them so well. We pray for Peter and Amy and Brenda and Michelle. We pray for all the local houses of faith here in Tallahassee. They're their parishioners, uh, congregants, and uh, staff, and clergy. And Lord, we pray for your universal church. Let us together join in the general thanksgiving found on page 125. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, <coughs> excuse me, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you've made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteous all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore.